Hi, my name is Matt McKay, and I'm a percussionist with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Uh, I actually started playing percussion when I was 10 years old, although I started the violin when I was four, and then picked up the piano when I was seven. But my older brother played percussion. He was actually a drummer, so I thought he was super cool, way cooler than everything else I was doing. So. I thought for sure I had to have to copy him. And so I picked up percussion and 23 years later, I'm still playing. So clearly it stuck with me. Uh, I've been with the orchestra since 2012. So this is my ninth season, believe it or not. And it's a, it's a really great and unique job because every single week I get to come in and play a wide variety of different instruments, get to play snare drum, bass drum, marimba, xylophone, glockenspiel, whistles, bells, everything down the line. So. It's a very unique and uh, exhilarating experience from week to week. So I wanted to start you off by talking a little bit about the snare drum. So many of you may already know a lot about it, but I'm just going to talk through some of the basics anyway. The top head here is called the batter head. The bottom head on the underside is called the resonant head. We don't ever play the resonant head, or at least not usually, but it has a very important function, which is when you play the batter head, it sends a column of air through the shell here, which my shell is made of wood, yours might be made of metal, but it doesn't really matter because as soon as you play the top head, the bottom head reverberates, then triggering the response from the snares. And that is why we get that especially sharp snapping sound. Now, if I turn off the snares using this lever here, which you should have on your drum as well, it's gonna sound like this. So just the drum sound, and now with a snare sound. It's great. However, sometimes you might go to your drum and it might sound a little bit, I don't know, washy, loose. Something more like that. And what could be happening is that your snares are a little bit too loose. Now, if you need to adjust that, just double check and make sure that the snares are connected on both ends. And if they are, all you're gonna have to do is tighten clockwise, righty tighty, this little knob here. And keep going until it starts to sound a little bit more articulate. Now you can over tighten. If you get to the point where it's starting to choke the head and you get maybe a little bit of a humming sound, that means you've gone too far. So then if you get to that point, just dial it back and go counterclockwise just a little bit. And that ought to help you out. Um, if you do have a drum key, uh, these are really great little tools. However, this is to be used not to take apart your drum. If you ever think that you have something wrong with your drum, or then maybe something is stuck inside of it, always contact your music teacher. They should be able to help you out with that. However, a drum key is really a very helpful tool in terms of trying to tune the instrument up if the head is a little bit too loose. So for instance, I like to have the top head around a G to a B. So you could basically aim for an A, just somewhere right in the middle. Um, right now, it's somewhere in that range. But let's say I wanted to bring it up a little bit. I always start with the top right lug in front of me, and I would crank this up just a tiny bit, quarter turn. Then I find the opposite lug, right on the opposite side of it, and then I crank that one a quarter turn. And then I keep doing that going around the drum till all of them have been turned a quarter turn. And I listen for the pitch, and then I try to keep on bringing it up if necessary, or leave it as is. Um, in terms of just standing at the drum, we like to make sure that the very top of the hoop here is set just a couple inches below our waist because we want to make sure that we don't have the drum so high that we can't extend our arms or so low that you know it's a little bit awkward. So just a couple inches below the waist and that should give, give you a nice little playing position. You also might notice that on your drum you have a little mute built into your drum. Some drums have them, some drums don't. My drum does not, so I use a cloth. If your drum doesn't, you take a little cloth and you put it on the top head, can function as a mute or a muffle, which helps to give it a little uh, bit of a drier sound. So that's with the muffle on. That's with the muffle off. So a little bit of a difference. Um, 
but that is a sound that we like to go for. If you do have the muffle on the inside, all you do is take the little knob and then just tighten it clockwise, and that should give you a little bit more of the muffle. So I learned from a very young age that practicing every day with a lot of consistency is much more important than trying to squeeze it all in in one day. Um, routinely, I would try to show up to my lessons or rehearsals having only just squeezed all my practicing in right beforehand, thinking that no one would be able to tell the difference. And of course, every single time the teachers could tell the difference. But more importantly than that, I really wasn't getting better. So once I started establishing a routine of just playing 15, 20, 30 minutes every day instead of trying to do an hour on one day, I started showing tons of progress. Uh, as far as playing, gripping the sticks, snare drum grip is actually quite simple, okay? So you take the thumb and you take the index finger and you place them directly across the stick from each other, just like this, just within that first or second knuckle there. Then the middle finger is gonna wrap underneath just for a little bit of support and then the fourth and fifth fingers kind of are just along there for the ride. They don't do a whole lot, except in really, really loud playing. But for the most part, they're just gonna be kind of hanging out there. So mostly it's a three finger grip, okay? And one thing that you can do um, to kind of practice this grip is start by uh, playing the paradiddle, okay? So this is a rudiment out of the 26 rudiments. Um, and it starts with the right hand and then it's gonna shift to the left hand. So it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And you'll notice, in order for me to go that fast, I have to stay really loose in my hands. The stick never really gets squeezed, because if I try to do that, I'll never be able to play fast. And of course, if you're playing the drums, one of the things you want to do is play fast, right? That's why we all play, because it's super fun to do that. So make sure you stay super relaxed so that you can play with as much speed as possible. Now, if you don't have a snare drum and all you have is a drum pad, that's quite all right. I do a lot of my practicing on a drum pad. All you have to know is that sometimes you have to work a little bit harder to play the softs because you can't really hear them all that much. But the same rules apply with all of your technique. The drum pad is designed to, to feel as much like a real snare drum as possible. So no worries about that. Just keep practicing away. Another percussion instrument you might encounter is the glockenspiel, also known as the bells. Uh, the bells have the same layout as a lot of the other keyboard instruments like piano, marimba, xylophone, uh, vibraphone. So it's actually really great in that way that once you learn that setup, you don't really have to learn anything else. It's just that they're various sizes and you have to use different mallets. But for bells, you want to use a hard plastic mallet, generally speaking. There are exceptions, but usually something that looks kind of like this. And it's going to sound pretty bright and pretty loud. Now, I've just played a chromatic scale, which is something that you can practice too. Um, it starts on a C, and you can start with your right hand, and you're gonna utilize all of the notes in the uh, single scale. As percussionists, we try as much as possible to get even hands and see if we can become as ambidextrous um, and equal between the hands as possible. Um, so that's something good to practice. Another thing to note is that the grip is going to be very similar to the snare drum grip in that we're going to have the kind of this three finger bass. But what's a little bit different about this is we might keep our fourth and fifth fingers wrapped around the mallet a bit more because the top of the mallet's a bit heavier than a snare drum stick. So it's, if you just kind of let it drop, it's going to stay down. So we're going to actually see if we can bring it up back to from where we started it. So it's going to look like this. And even if I play very quietly, let's say on these notes, if I start here, I still want to end at the same place. And that's basically it. So if your goal with playing an instrument is ultimately to get better, 
I challenge you just for three weeks even, just try every single day, just bare minimum 15 minutes. It's gonna be so much more helpful for you than just trying to do it all in one day or two days. Uh, and trust me, at the end of those three weeks, you are gonna notice a lot of progress. So good luck. So the best advice I could give you as far as how to be prepared and successful when you're going to a uh, live rehearsal is as far as for percussionists go, you wanna show up as early as you possibly can because honestly, to be on time for a percussionist is to be late. Um, I usually try to show up between 30 minutes and an hour early. That's probably a bit much for you. However, if you can show up five, 10 minutes early, just enough to make sure that you know exactly where you're supposed to be, that you can find all your instruments, because the thing about it is sometimes you might come in and you have to expect to play a different instrument than you think. All of a sudden, you don't know where your tambourine is and you're running around even just a few minutes extra before the rehearsal to get there. I think it's gonna be very helpful for you. Um, Always bring a pencil to rehearsal because sure enough, there's gonna be some adjustment that needs to be made by the teacher and they're gonna want you to write something in your part. And maybe even more importantly than that, you might have an idea and you wanna write it in, you're gonna forget if you don't write it in or you have a sticking that comes to mind that's gonna be easier for next time and you wanna jot it down. So that would be another thing. And I think the third and most important thing is just to come in with like a flexible and positive attitude because just in a percussion section, uniquely, we are working with each other. It's not just like you playing your part. Like everyone like is very reliant on each other. So just make sure that you come in with a smile and ready to help each other out because you're all really on the same team. Uh, and you've already made a great decision at this point by playing percussion because it's the most fun, unique, interesting instrument. And like some of my favorite people play percussion. So. Uh, just kudos, and I really hope you have a great time playing.